Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 37. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look at adding in some music or rather some ambient sounds combined with a little bit of music and we'll also look at creating a sniper scope for our screen. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else that I have on this channel. There's a lot to learn guys. And with that in mind, let's get to work. So ambient music or sound effects or any kind of well, audio that you would hear is kind of vital and crucial in a lot of games. We've already dealt with sound effects, i.e. when we fire our gun and whatnot, but obviously there is a lot more to it. So all I'm going to do for now is I'm going to import into our audio folder this ambient sound and it is about two and a half minutes long and it will go on a loop and you can get this for free on the website if you head over there downloads and assets and FPS series and you can get it right there so we're going to use this one right here and we need to attach it to our first person controller so we'll add an extra game object and we'll just call this uh, um, sound. Obviously, I'm short for ambient. So just drag and drop onto there, and we'll leave us playing away. And obviously, we've not really dealt with it too much, but you can play with the pitch. So I'm going to just experiment now with how the pitch can work. So if we press play, and you can generally hear how it sounds. And if we go a little bit further, there is a little bit more to it rather than just the wind and sound effects in the back. It just depends, you know, how you want to have it. You Looks don't necessarily like spiders over there. have to, you know, have this sound. But you'll notice there that two sounds can overlap, which is perfectly fine. So this is where the pitch can come into play. You can change the pitch to be higher, lower. You know, let's have it a little bit higher and see how it sounds, how different it sounds. So you can see it's kind of a lot higher. So if we have it higher, you can see how you can play with how the pitch is. Sounds very Asian. <laughs> or you could, obviously, invert, lower. Just kind of depends how you want the sound to be. So creating ambient sounds and music can also depend a lot on this pitch variable. And you can change this pitch variable within a C Sharp script. It's just a case of referring to it and having it set as whatever you want. Or generally, you could have it set as that. So I might just leave it at 0.5. And I'm going to have that in the game like so. So you can hear how it affects it. But again, it's all down to preference and how you want to have this. It's not my game, it's your game at the end of the day. Okay, so now let us move on to having a sniper scope. Now, a sniper rifle in general doesn't really matter how we make it because you can just use the gun mechanics that we've already created. There is no point repeating the same process that we've already done to create a sniper rifle when all we would really need to do is create a sniper scope. So in order to create a sniper scope, we need to bring in a texture. So let's go to our textures folder. I want to drag and drop this scope texture, which you can get again on the website. If you go over there, downloads and assets, FPS, and it's right there. So the key to getting this to work is the same kind of thing as we had with our circle map that we did quite a few tutorials ago. It's all about using this texture and changing the texture type to a sprite and then clicking apply. So generally what this texture actually is, as we can see down here, is just an image with certain sections of it deleted out, i.e. that means it is completely see-through, transparent, and that is what reflects on our screen for us to be able to see straight through it. So to put that into practice, what we'll actually need to do is attach it to our game but not as a raw image, we'll do it as a standard image. The reason we use a standard image here is because the raw image won't necessarily display how we would want it to display. Because with an image, we can attach a sprite, which is exactly what we've done here. So if we attach that over here, and then double click image, right click, rename, and we'll call it 
sniper scope. And then all we need to do is click stretch. So we'll need to stretch it across the entire screen just simply because there's no point having a sniper scope like that just in the bottom corner. That would look absolutely ridiculous. So zero out all the numbers up here. And what it will leave us with if we press play is quite literally a sniper scope. And you can see how that's working. So there's a couple of things that we're going to do here because we don't necessarily need that cursor that we've got in the screen. So we need to write some scripts to be, or a script, I should say, to be able to, let's say, right click and get the sniper on, as well as turning off our cursor because the sniper scope then becomes our cursor. So let's get to work on that. In scripts, right click, create C sharp script, and we'll call this sniper scope active. So in this particular script, we're going to have uh, three variables. The first variable is going to be the player camera that we use, i.e. the camera that is attached to our first person controller. The second one is going to be that scope that we've just put on our screen. And the third one is going to be our actual original cursor, because like I said, we'll need to turn that off. So in order to do all this, we don't need void star and we don't need any annotations. So we can just delete them straight out. And like I said, the first variable, public game object. And we'll call this, um, what should we call it? Player cam. So we'll make it relative so we actually understand what it is. Uh, next is going to be public game object sniper scope texture or text in this case and finally public game object original cursor semicolon so what we need to do is we need to determine if we are pressing the mouse button so in our case right now we're going to use the should we use the left or right um, probably best if we use right, isn't it? So if input in brackets, remember input dot get button, actually it should be mouse button down, shouldn't it? Mouse button down and in brackets, the mouse button number, uh, I think it's one. Uh, I don't know why I put a semicolon there. Uh, close bracket and open curly bracket. So basically if we're pressing our mouse button, what we need to do is player cam dot get component. And this is the kind of important bit because this is the bit which allows us to zoom in on a target. And we'll probably modify this a little bit more next episode as well, because there's still more I want to do with this series. Uh, we need to access the camera component. So camera open close bracket dot. And what we need to reference to make this actually work is if I go to my first person character right here, which is the player camera, we need to change this field of view setting. By default, it's set to 60, which is what's displayed here, but we'll need to decrease that number to give it the zoom effect. And if I have it selected here and we look at this camera preview, if I do this and decrease the field of view, you can see how much it's zoomed in. So if I reset this back to 60, we have the normal view. If we have this set as 25, we can see how it's zoomed in. So what we need to do is reference that field of view. So it's field with a lowercase f of view, and we'll make it equal to 25, semicolon. And at the same time, we actually need to set that sniper scope on. So sniper scope text dot set active true semicolon <clears throat> and then at exactly the same time turn off our original cursor original cursor dot set active false that'll be okay so basically when we press our mouse button down we get exactly what we want but we also need to do the inverse of that, don't we? So obviously we would have to have if input dot get mouse button up 
and then in brackets, the same one as we have above. Open curly bracket. Yep, you've guessed it. We just do the absolute inverse of this. So player cam dot get component uh, camera oh, goes bracket dot field of view equals 60. But it's worth noting at this point, if you have changed your field of view at any point, then you will absolutely have to change it back to what you originally had. You can't have 50, uh, 60 if, for example, your field of view was originally set to 70. To keep the consistency going in your game, reset it to whatever it should be. Mine is 60. If yours is 70, reset it to 70. But that's not to say that you can't change your field of view later on in the game. You just have to make sure that the consistency remains within your script. So then, sniper scope text dot set active and it's going to be false and then obviously we have to put our cursor back on so original cursor dot set active if i can spell true semicolon and I have spelled that wrong. That's why that's underlined. My typing is terrible today. There we go. It really is terrible. There we go. Set active. True. So let's save that script. And what we'll need to do is turn off the sniper scope that we had on, which is right there. So we need to deactivate up here. And now we need to attach that script to, well, we can attach it to anything really. It doesn't matter too much what we do attach it to, but let's attach it to gun mechanics to keep everything, I guess, uniform. So let's find the sniper scope script right there. Attach. And now we just need to attach the player character onto there. And then the sniper scope texture, which is our sniper scope. And then finally, the original cursor, which is uh, these three, isn't it? So we'll need to attach them in a single game object. So on the canvas, or rather, if we go on up curse, right click, create empty, and just take that out of there so it becomes its own game object. F2, rename, let's have cursor obj, short for object. And then take those four objects and place them in that cursor object, which now means that we can go on the gun mechanics and then drag and drop the cursor object onto original cursor and let's press play. So we've started without our uh, sniper scope on. So let's go over here and over here and let's see if this works. So let's see if we can zoom in with our scope on the spiders and we can, there we go. So I've held down the right mouse button there, and now I've let go, and we're back to normal. There we go. So let's put this into a little bit more practice. All you would need to do at this point is just get yourself a, a well, I guess a sniper rifle uh, model, much in the same way as we have a gun here. So imagine if we actually have the sniper rifle right now, all it means we would have to do is we could zoom in and there we go and that's how it works so you would have your sniper rifle as the weapon object so that's what I said earlier when I mean that we don't really need to repeat the process of creating a weapon when we've already created it you just need to change the model nice okay so that is how we create the sniper scope now the next tutorial what I would like to do with it is create a bit more of an animation to it because at the moment it just kind of goes from the field of view 60 to 25. I'd like to create a range where it kind of maybe zooms in quickly to do that. So I think that'd be kind of fun to create. And we're also going to look at uh, light reflection probes next tutorial as well because I'd really like to get this looking a bit maybe different and see how we get with it. So yeah, that's next episode as well. Uh, zoom in on the scope and reflection probes. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.